I had mentioned to um, the new investor yesterday in the Facebook group that, you know, there's a ton of land. You need to have this abundance mentality. Uh, she responded, and in the response, there are a few layered questions again that I thought we'd just talk about. Uh, so she says, Scott, I agree about the wide availability of vacant, undeveloped land. Most of it was without any utilities, and I'm not looking to enhance, add value to it before selling. That's good because we don't do that. I would ask myself, would I buy that land? And my answer consistently has been no. While I get there nope. is a, I love while I get, part. while I get there is a pig for every barn, like Mark says at every boot camp. Uh, I feel like I'm greasing the fire of the big player areas in the area. So then she kind of talks, starts talking again about the big player areas. So let, let's go to the first part of the question: Would I buy that land? And yes. my answer has been consistently no. What's your response to that, Matt Forbes? Uh, that's wrong. Um, you're incorrect. I love you, dearly, <laughs> whoever you are. But uh, eh, no, wrong. We're dying for property. If you would just go buy that property, I, I would guarantee you can wholesale that at a minimum. Here's the problem. There's only a handful of properties that I would want to keep that I own. And I own a lot. But does and that matter? A, a lot. It does not matter. It's not that there's a pig for every barn, as in there's that one guy who's going to find it. It's there's a lot of guys who want that property. You have to just have a little faith that you will find a buyer for it. And if you're in an area where there's a lot of others in, in, investors and you're pricing it remotely correctly, you can wholesale it and get out of it. So there's very little risk. You just have to get your head around the fact that you don't want to live there, and that's okay. That's the part, right? People who sell surfboards don't necessarily surf, right? This is You don't have to love it. You just have to understand it and buy it correctly. That's a tough one. It took me a long time to get over that. Long time. Because there's no way I'm driving to Texas and, and I want that property. There's just no chance. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But I can tell you over and over and over and over again, like hundreds of times, I talk to people who definitely want that property and who pay me every month for it. So I urge you to get out of your own way on that one. It's hard. Awesome. Zeno, what are your thoughts? You like the, you love this topic. I do. And by the way, Matt, although you wouldn't love it, you would go... Uh camp on it on a, on a tent that's too small for you i so here's the thing is i he he knows that i went out to those properties and as much as i think it's desert in the middle of nowhere and it's lame and no one would ever want to live there it was gorgeous and if i didn't live 800 million miles away i would go camping there and i think i'd love it <laughs> truthfully yes it's a but i didn't feel that way when i bought it for sure it's a freedom. You know, look at it. If you, you ever go to coffee shops lately and you see that they have uh, 50,000 different flavors and some of them are like gingerbread and then some of them are like oh, yeah. bubble gum, like they have bubble gum coffee or, or, or uh, you know, uh, just think of it. There's such weird coffee flavors. And you're like, well, I would never. Well, I'm sure the owner of that uh, coffee shop probably doesn't drink all those coffees either. But there's customers that love those coffees. And so he supplies them. If you own a coffee shop, should you just serve regular black coffee because that's how it's supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, consumed? I'm not going to have hazelnut, vanilla. Or, oh, who would drink that, right? It doesn't matter what we like. It's what the customer likes. It's what the people want, and you fulfill that need. Yeah, it is hard though. I mean, like to whoever's point that was. I, I don't know who the, what the name was, but it's hard to get your head around that one. That just because you don't like it doesn't mean that other right. people wouldn't like it. Um, it, it. It just at the end of the day, they do. Well, if you look yeah. at some of these locations, like the ones you're talking about out in uh, near El Paso, these people living in these congested in these cities, and they want to go out to these wide open places where there's nobody can tell them what to do because there's no restrictions. They can shoot their guns, drive their HVs, ride their horses, do whatever they want with yeah. complete freedom. And they don't care that it's desert land. It's freedom. Yep. You're selling them freedom. True, true. Let, yeah, let freedom and, ring. 
Had to. Uh, had to. So, so there, there's a Scott Todd saying, uh, and and we've all heard it a thousand times, and that's "Don't be a land snob." Now, when he says that, mm-hmm. it it sounds a little uh, derogatory, but what he really means by that is. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as your pricing's right because they will all sell. Uh, it's more about showing up on the mailing side, showing up on the marketing side. If you are buying that land at 25 cents on the dollar, you are going to sell that property, especially if there is activity going on in that county where all of the pros are working uh, and... Uh, you're going to sell the property. And it, you know, like Forbes, you have, and Mike Zano, I know you have, we have all sold properties that we never, ever, ever thought we'd sell, or we never, ever, ever thought that anybody would want this property for any gal darn reason, because it's a rock, or it's a swamp, or it's a mountain, or whatever. Yeah. They just, well, eventually, they all sell. So th- there is a flip side to this coin, though which is properties that you connect with are easier for you to sell. It doesn't mean that the other ones don't sell. So for whoever that person was, if look, if desert land in the middle of Arizona or Nevada or Texas doesn't get it done for you, like, okay, no problem. You go find places where, where the community is at, where it does, where there's fishing nearby or they're on a mountain or there's a lot of trees or, you know, think about what you like because you'll have an easier time selling what you connect with. That's a Scott Todd saying all the way. I do agree with that. There is a point where you're like, I don't care anymore. I get it. It sells. I'm good. I can go sell anything. We're all set. There's a market for all this stuff. But maybe in the beginning, just switch your focus to somewhere where you think you connect yes. more. To the land, and maybe that's a really good place for you to start. 